Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about babies, toddlers, and kids on the boat. What I've learned from uh, being a parent, from being a kid on the boat, from being around <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on boats, and uh, some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, and I wanted to pass them along to you. So we're going to start with just the basic kids stuff. You, you probably already know this. Good fitting and comfortable life vests. Um, I'll, I'll make a video, or actually I'll put a video up of testing a life jacket to see if it fits on my kids. So look for that. It'll be in the short section. Plenty of towels. Kids have a way of getting everything wet and getting your towels wet. So extra towels is always good. Good water shoes, easy on and off. Remember the docks are hot, the pavement at the boat ramp is hot, and you need something that they can just slip right on uh, and isn't a big pain to get on. Dry clothes, sweatshirts, and pants. Even in the summertime, when a kid is wet and tired, you don't want them cold on top of that. It makes for a cranky, cranky kid. So make sure you bring that extra stuff. Plenty of water, plenty of Capri Suns, plenty of drinks for them to stay hydrated because the sun just takes it out of you when you're out on the water being active all day. And if they're anything like my girls, my kids eat like they're... 17 year old boys just growing and, and weightlifting and playing sports all day long. They eat so much on the boat. So sandwiches, uh, crackers and sausage, chips and salsa. Grapes are a big fan favorite because we can throw them at each other and try to make it in the mouth. And it's a fun game while you're in the water. You try to shoot it in people's mouths pinwheels, you get a tortilla, you put some uh, cream cheese or some sort of spread, some ham, some turkey, some cheese, some roast beef, whatever you like, pimento, whatever you like, you roll it up and you slice it into little bite-sized pieces that are easy and mess-free. And I also like the idea of an extra life jacket for each kid um, so that they have a dry one once that one gets wet, especially if you're going to be out in the evening. And I've got a trick if you stay tuned that uh, my wife invented. Oh, by the way, don't forget the sunscreen. That may not be the right way to put it on, but it's uh, <laughs> that's my personality of my youngest. Things to avoid. Squirt guns. I think squirt guns are just asking for your kids to get in trouble. They're going to squirt somebody that doesn't want to be squirted. They're going to they're going to have so much fun with them. They're not going to know when to stop and it's going to get somebody in trouble. Blow up toys, rafts, floats and things like that that can't be tied onto the boat because at some point they're going to be let go in the cove or on the water and the wind's going to blow them away and somebody's going to have to swim after them again. Somebody's going to get in trouble because they didn't hold on to the float that they promised they would hold on to and they had to bring. So I've gotten to the point where we just leave them at home and everybody knows it's easier because it happens every time. Chocolate's going to melt. Cheetos and Doritos, that dust gets everywhere. Red drinks if they spill. Glass, you definitely want to avoid glass. It can break. Um, toys that sink again. Oh, this would be great. I'll hold on to it. And they drop it in the water and it's gone for good. And then we found sunglasses. We tried different sunglasses with our girls and they just, they didn't want to keep them on. They would get lost. They just ended up being a hassle. Um, and our girls never wear glasses on the boat, uh, unless they steal mine and are, are wearing mine. So let's get into babies. So we've had a baby on a boat. This is my youngest. Uh, this is my oldest. So we were learning here. Um, but one thing that we found very helpful was we got them in swim lessons right away. We knew we were going to have water babies. We knew that it was going to be a part of our lifestyle, and we wanted them to be comfortable in the water. So we did swim lessons out of, as soon as they could get in them, we were dunking them in the water just so they were comfortable with it. And um, that makes a big difference. Everything else that you do um, all the way up to doing water sports. Hats with chim strats. My wife was big on the girls wearing hats, and we tried a bunch of them. We found the iPlay Brim Sun Hat, which is not the one my, my girl is wearing here, but a different one. I'll put a link in the description. Diapers, wipes, swimmers, the swim diapers, and trash bags, um, here's what we found. You go through a crap load of diapers and swimmers because they get in the water, you're swimming around having fun, you get out, you take the swimmers off, 
You put on a regular diaper because if they poop in the swimmers, it's a disaster. Uh, the trash bags to throw those diapers in so you got a place for them. And we took a ton of them with us after the first couple of times because we realized that we were going through them a bunch and um, you don't want to clean that up on the boat. Extra bottle, extra food. Have a plan for a nap. They'll get tired real easy in that sun, um, in the uh, playing in the water. They Our girls loved it. And they also, they slept a lot on the boat in between. Um, and I'll talk about why that's a good thing. Uh, we also, we like to bring the car seat or a stroller or a baby jumper. Sea Rock makes one that you can tie up to an arch or a T-top or something like that and kind of keep them buckled in. But we liked it because we would have a place to put it when we were coming into we, it, the, the, our kid, when we were coming into the docks and we could have them sort of tied down. Now, when we took a pontoon, we would just roll that stroller right on. Or if the boat was big enough, we rolled the stroller right on. The car seat, if we were taking out a bow rider or something small, um, my kids were young when I was selling boats. So we took out a bunch of different styles of boats over that time and we would just put them in the car seat and we could strap them down. We knew they were safe um, as we needed to do things. And then especially with the baby, the extra dry life jacket, because, you know, as they get older, you can kind of say, hey, suck it up. You're OK. But with the baby. If they're cold, they're crying and they're not happy, Um, but you don't want them without a life jacket on in the boat. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard says over 18 pounds. Our kids came out at nine plus pounds each, so we got to 18 pretty quickly. I don't know what they were, but we put them in a regular life jacket right off the bat. Um, And and one thing I want to mention, my wife said this to me, is um, we felt like we're just going to leave it on the kid and that doesn't come off. If she cries at first, and, and neither one of ours really did, you saw the very first picture of, of my Emery smile, and that's the first time she ever had a life jacket on, is just leave it on them. They'll get used to it. They're babies. They, you know, they get used to poop sitting in their pants all day long. They can handle a life jacket. Um, just try to make it as comfortable as you can and just leave them on and they'll get used to it. So that was a tip from my wife. She helped me with this one. But here's why we love taking the kids out in the evening and getting them all tired out is because when they fell asleep, then we could have a nice, you can see us having dinner here out on the water. We could have a nice, relaxing, quiet night on the water and the kids were sound asleep and they slept through the whole thing. We got them in the truck on the way home and it was, it was fantastic. So, um, we really like to do that. Now, as they get into toddlers, I think this is the toughest age to have a kid on the boat. Um, because they're mobile, they've got some opinions on how things should be. So what I find, and I've demoed a lot of kids that had never been on boats when I was selling, I would take them out on test drives. And most of the kids had never been on the boat when I worked with them. So explaining the boat rules and explaining why they're important. Um, I found that adding that why, and not just, this is the way it is, is here's why life jackets at all time. Hey, it's a law until you're 12 years or old, are, are 12 years or older, you have to have a life jacket on at all times when the boat's underway. I left the underway part out. Um, finger crushers on the boat. Hey, let me show you what happens if you play with this hatch, if you play with this fish box, if you play with this ladder, if you play with whatever, this door. Um, it's going to crush your fingers and they get it so that they can avoid those things. When you say why it, you still may, they still have to learn it the hard way, maybe, but hopefully you can avoid that crying day that, you know, crushes a finger and ruins a fun day on the water. I have a rule. You're on your butt or on your knees on a seat when we're underway and you're holding on to the boat. No throwing your hands up in the air when you're a toddler and being all wild. Um, butts and knees on a seat when you're underway and then it's your depending on your boat style the on the knees you may need to rule out if i'm in a pontoon if i'm in a deep bow rider i'm okay with that um if i'm in a a flats boat or a center console that doesn't have a lot of freeboard a lot of depth maybe i'm a on the knees kind of guy uh, but whatever works for your style of boat, but absolutely no leaning over the sides. Listen, the water's shimmery, it's sparkling. There may be ducks or, or porpoise or some kind of fish or whatever under there. 
and they will want to lean over the boat. Guaranteed, every kid is going to lean over the boat. Um, you can tell them no, but at some point they're going to do it. So make sure you've got an adult within arm's reach with these toddlers. They're squirrely, they're squirmy, and they're active. Um, no going by the prop and tell them why. Hey, listen, here's the motor. If it's an outboard, if it's an inboard, if it's a, an IO, what jet drive, whatever, hey, this is the motor. You don't want to go buy it. Or if it's a jet drive, you don't want to go buy it if it's on, and that's part of the captain's responsibility. And here's why is because this thing's moving around at thousands of miles an hour, and it's going to cut your toe off. It's going to cut your leg, and you don't want that to happen. Um, with all the kids I've been out with the water, um, and it's been dozens and dozens, uh, they get it. They, they can understand that when you explain. Um, no one jumps in the water until the captain says it's okay. I found this from experiences. You stop that boat, and they're so excited to get onto the sandbar, to jump in at the cove, to go swimming, to do whatever. You've got to say, you stay seated. Until I get the anchor set, until we're we're at the dock, until we're uh, up on the sandbar, until I say go, nobody jumps in and you stay on your butts uh, and you stay seated. Two feet and a hand on the boat when moving. So if you're at anchor, butts on seats, and you're sitting when we're underway, but if we're just floating, you move around the cabin you know, freely, but have two feet and one hand on the boat. Because if a wave comes, if the wind goes, if it rocks for whatever reason, um, that third point of contact with the hand on the boat will keep them from falling. And there's a lot of corners, a lot of things for them to hit their head on when they're little people, right? So two feet and hands on the on a boat, on something, while you're moving away will, will avoid a lot of that. Um, I also, when jumping in, only jump off here. So they don't understand their feet are wet, the boat's wet, and you don't just jump off the side where your foot's going to slip out. Hell, some adults don't even understand that. So say, hey, because your feet are wet, the boat's wet, it's slick, this is where you can jump off. Now, you can jump off a thousand times um, in a day, but this is the only place you can jump off um, and then just hold to that. Um, hands in the boat, when coming into the dock. So when you're coming into the dock or the boat ramp uh, or onto the trailer, if they're in the boat, no putting your hands out, no trying to grab a rail, no trying to do anything, hands in your lap when we're coming in. Because what will happen is their little hand will get caught between the boat and the post. This is a good rule for adults too, is hands in the boat when coming in. I don't want anybody grabbing the railings or, or pushing off because I'm controlling the boat. When you, if you've done my, my best boat captain on the water or best pontoon captain on the water training, you have total control of the vessel and you don't want somebody pushing off um, as you're coming in. You want their hands in the boat so nothing gets smashed. And uh, that's one that you've got to remind them every time you come in. And then as they get older toddlers, you can start to get them involved. Get My wife told me I did this. I don't really remember it. But, you know, hey, watch out for floating logs. Let me know when you see a no wake buoy. Uh, point out any boats that we might get in close to and, and start to get them involved in just little ways. Um, you know, anything that uh, that can help them stay engaged because their minds are all over the place. Um, if, if you have an issue with the life jackets, this is a great book. Um, this is Diane um, Seltzer wrote the book. Um, I, I think I'm, I think I'm saying her name right, but the amazing adventures of boat girl, I meant to grab the book before I got here. Um, uh, but my, my daughter, my daughters had the book. It was one of their favorite books when they were this age, cause they love boating. It talked about wearing your life jacket. It talked about the adventures of this boat girl. Diane's in the industry has been in the industry for a long time. Um, she's got a, a YouTube channel as well. I think it's my boat life. Um, so you can go check that out, but adventures of boat girl is a good fun book. If you're a boater and you've got kids, definitely, this is a, a book that should be in the, uh, in the bedtime reading, um, uh, list. So I talked about my wife's towel trick with toddlers, especially this one works good because they don't like to be cold. If you don't have that extra dry life jacket, you take a towel and you wrap it around them. And then you take it from the back with the edges and you pull it up over the top and you tuck it into the front and then you put the life jacket over it. When you do it that way, basically everywhere the life jacket's going to hit, 
is going to hit that towel first. So it's going to dry them off. It's going to dry the life jacket. It works great. Our girls would, when we didn't have the extra life jackets with us, um, they, they would just, Hey mom, put the towel on me. And it, they knew it would warm them up. So you get a nice dry towel cause you've got extra towels and you do that. The puddle jumper, some puddle jumpers are coast guard approved. Now we have them or we had them. Our daughters have outgrown them. Um, but they actually like the regular life jackets better. We use the puddle jumper as the dry life jacket is what usually happened. They swam in their regular life jacket, and wore that all day. And then when it got cool out and they wanted something dry, we put on the puddle jumper, um, bring things fun to do with toddlers. They get bored real easy. So we've done, we have put a water table on a pontoon with my uh, daughter and my nephew would play in the water table and they loved it. They had a great time. Fill up a tub with water, make them a little swimming pool in the boat. If you've got room, um, a fishing pole, bring a fishing pole and just leave the little plastic fish on the end. They feel like they're fishing. My daughter was, I think four or five before she realized she wasn't going to catch a fish with that plastic piece on. But until then, she thought there was a good chance she was going to get a fish. Her older sister ruined it for us, but uh, just bring some fun things for them to do. Um, try not to make an electronic. Try to make it a cool thing to do. Dive toys uh, if you're in a shallow area. Um, even just cups, a cup that they can take onto the sand bar and they can make sand castles. They can a uh, shovel. <clears throat> that they can dig around in, um, toys, you know, there's little basketball hoops you can hook onto the sides of pontoons. Uh, there's a lot of different fun things, you know, your kids just bring a few extra things for them to do. And uh, I'll talk about swim shirts here in a little bit, but swim shirts are great. Um, keeps the sun off them. Um, they usually had some SPF in them, but they do get really cold when they're wet. We found this out. And, um, so w if you're going to do the swim shirts, bring an extra shirt or take the swim shirt off at some point because they do get really cold. Kids don't have the body fat. They get really cold easily. And again, a cold, a hungry and a wet kid is a bad combination. It'll ruin a great day. And if you can kind of plan for it, especially with those toddlers, it makes a big difference. Now, my kids are um, seven and 10 now, almost seven and 11. I can't believe it. Uh, goes fast. So I said they have to hang on when we're underway. As they get older, listen, they're smarter. My kids have been on boats since, as you saw, babies. So they love to ride now with their hands up and see how long they can hold up. You see that little rope that's uh, right there? My daughter likes to tie a rope off. She can do a cleat hitch, so she will she will tie off that rope on the two bow cleats and use it like she's riding a, a rodeo, and she loves to do that. It gives them one extra point to hold on to, but I let them do this because I'm comfortable with it. You know your kids, um, but start giving them responsibility at this age. My kids, like I said, my kid, my youngest can do a cleat hitch. She likes to help me tie up. They like to get the fenders out and get the dock lines ready. Um, they're in charge of doing certain things with the cooler, uh, getting the boat loaded up, putting things away. They know a lot of the stuff. They know how to turn the blower on when we're running a, a stern drive or a, an inboard outboard. Um, they, I start giving them responsibility, including driving the boat, which we'll talk about. And it, explain the dangers as you're doing it. So if they're going to be doing re, using the dock lines and tying up, let them know you don't want to get your finger caught in the bite where the the line's going to tighten up because it will it will pinch your finger and it's really going to hurt. It could pull it off. Let them know that there's real dangers involved with this stuff. And what I've found with my girls anyway, and I've got two very different personalities in my girl. I've got a very cautious and I've got a very funny and wild and outgoing what you saw with the sunscreen. And each of them, it makes, it helps when I tell them what they need to be aware of, but still let them do it with, with my guidance. Um, explain why you're doing what you're doing as you're driving, as I'm driving, I'll be like, Hey, I see that. What, tell me when you see a boat and then tell me which way you think we should go. Um, you know, tell me wh how to navigate where we're, where we're trying to get to a restaurant or, or going to a sandbar or going to a cove or whatever. 
and just explain basic things as I'm putting the anchor out. They like to help with the anchor. And, you know, there's some things they can do. There's some things they can't. Um, but I explain why I do everything the way I do. And when there's something that they can do, I'll turn it over to them for that portion of it. And it really makes a big difference, including cleaning. When we're done for the day, every day the boat gets wiped down when we're done uh, inside and outside, unless we're on a lift, um, where it's just not feasible. And they, they are part of that. They're part of the loading and unloading. It's not just mom and dad doing everything. And that's part of the boating adventure for them. Now, um, life jackets on at all time. And what I find with kids is you break it once and you break it forever. I, my wife told me, like to break the rules. And this is one I've let my oldest take her jacket off when we were swimming at the shore once. And now, always she's asking, can I take it off here? Can I take it off now? My youngest is starting to do it because I broke it one time. And so I'm trying to save you <laughs> some headaches here because it's really annoying. Um, this is from my wife. My, my girl's life vest on my youngest She's a, a little bit, um, a little bit bigger, um, and just stouter and her armpit rubs on her life jacket. We've tried three or four different life jackets. They all rub throughout the day. So we started doing boys, short sleeve swim shirts under the life vest. Now boys, because the arms are longer, my wife said they're longer. So they cover it. The girls have like a different, <clears throat> excuse me a different cut to them and it still rubs. So we go with the boys short sleeves because the long sleeves, they're too cold. They, they stay wet and they, they get cold as if it cools off a little bit. Maybe if you're down in a really hot temperature, it won't matter. Uh, but that's something that we look out for. Um, explain slick surfaces and wet feet. Remember with the toddlers, I said, this is where you get a jump off the boat with older kids. You know, they can be a little bit more adventurous on this. As we were out with, um, with, uh, our neighbor, I said, Hey, you guys can jump off the bow. They wanted to jump off the bow is a little bit higher. We're in a super deep area. It's got the, the non-skid surface. I said, okay, but only jump where it's got the non-skid. As soon as it doesn't have that skid and it's slick and shiny, that's going to be super wet and you're going to fall in. And so they jumped all day. And then finally, at the as they were kind of forgot about it, my daughter hit that slicker spot and she sort of fell in awkward. Um, she was okay, but they you have to explain why uh, those things and, and it can be okay. Uh, no diving. This is a big one for my wife. She was a lifeguard um, for a long time. And uh, no diving is a rule when we're on the boat, even for me. I get in trouble if I dive <laughs> because there's uh, it's it's just a, a, a safety thing. You never know what's under the water, especially in a, a lake. Um, and then make memories. Listen, these things happen fast, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But these are some of the best times. The, the babies, okay, they're there. They're having fun. The toddlers, it's a lot of work, but still a lot of fun. When they get to this age, it's awesome. I'm telling you, 7, 10, almost 11 years old, it has been so much fun throughout that time to see them grow and develop and do different things. And if you, if you start out and your kids are this age, kind of go back to the toddler and the baby stuff and, and teach them along the way, because my kids have grown up with this. So they know more than a new kid that would be coming into boating, but just bring them along with you at their speed, give them the responsibility based on their expertise level. Now, driving the pontoon. I let my girls drive both of them. They love it. It's part of the fun of boating to me. I do it safely though. One, I am a incredibly competent, um, boat operator. Um, I, I've created the best boat captain on the water, the best, uh, pontoon captain on the water training. If you're not there yet, maybe those programs are, are something you want to look at. Um, but if you're going to let your kid drive a couple of things, you are 100% responsible for lookout and paying attention to what they're doing. Give them guidance, make them adjust early, and don't do it on the busiest. Don't do it on the 4th of July. I will let my kids know, hey, Dad, can we drive? Can we drive? Not right now. You can drive on the evening when the lake's quieter. Uh, you can't drive today because it's Saturday, but Sunday evening, or, or we boat during the week a lot, um, you can boat when we're out tomorrow, when it'll be quieter, you can drive then. I control the throttle for my youngest. She's seven. 
I still control the throttle. They steer. I'm right there to grab the wheel if necessary. My 10-year-old, now I let her run the throttle with my hand right there. And I explain to them, just as I explain in the best boat captain on the water training, I explain to them how the throttle works, and I've walked them through the probably the first five building blocks of that program I haven't gone through the whole system with them yet, but I'm, I'm easing them into it, okay? And, and you could do the same thing with your kid. This is an absolute never, ever, ever do this. Please do not let your kids sit there or adults um, dragging your feet in the water on a deck boat or a pontoon. What will happen is the water is more powerful than your kid and they will grab their foot if they get it caught just a little bit too far, and it does not take much. They'll be ripped under, and they'll head right for the prop, and that is not something I want to happen to anybody. Please, please, please do not let your kids sit up in the bow of the boat with their feet dangling in or near the water, okay? All right, so water sports. Water sports is awesome. Um, I, I talk about this in Tow Water Sports with Confidence program. Um, follow what the kids want to do. Listen, this is not about creating the next uh, pro wakeboarder when they're six and seven years old, unless that's what they're into and they want to be aggressive. Don't throw them around on the tube if that's not what they enjoy. Don't make them ski if that's not what they enjoy. Know how to drive properly as an operator especially tubing is, is a little bit different, but if you're skiing or wakeboarding or surfing, driving is as important, if not more important than their skill as, as the skier, your ability to handle the, the throttle properly and turn properly, um, is most important. Uh, it, it's incredibly important. Watch the arc of the rope, especially in tubes, but even in on the wakeboard or, or skiing, they don't have great control. So that centrifugal force is going to whip them out. Know how far that's going to be and do not whip them into an obstruction. Another boat, a buoy, a dock. It's happened. I know a story of it. Um, somebody that a friend of a family, um, don't be aware of your surroundings. They have very little control at this age. Um, know your hand signals before you start. Faster, slower, um, cut, you know, raise your hand and give the okay sign when you fall that you're okay so that you can get back to them quickly, but not hurried and not scared. And then have fun with it. Make, let the kids make up some signals. Mine have, have come up with this for when they want rough water. Um, and they'll, if they want to do twirlies, they'll spin it around and, uh, and give the around and circle sign. Make it fun for them. Be patient. Hey, they don't understand the ropes and the, that the wind is blowing the boat and moving the ropes and it's you've got momentum going and you've got can't have slack in the rope. You got to tighten it up before you can start. Be patient with them. All they want to do is have fun. And that's all you want too. So everybody just calm down and remember it's all for fun and it'll be a blast. Um, just be patient with the kids. Do it for the kids and explain to them what you expect and how to do it. In this uh, Toe Sports with Confidence, my uh, girls give tips for kids. So they actually share their tips of, of uh, doing water sports, what they found helpful uh, for parents and the kids. Um, if you're a trailer boater, it, it's the most stressful. It takes the most skill and the most focus. I think of boating, docking, and putting it back on the trailer. This point depends on the age of the kids, but number one is keep them under control and keep them out of the way. So if they're old enough, hey, run up to the truck, get in the back of the truck, run over there and sit at that picnic shelter until we're done. If they're a toddler or a baby, get them buckled in a car seat and get them locked down. Um, you know, if the person back in the trailer is gets you know, they're, they're not super confident with it. My trailer, like a pro program will help with that, but maybe you don't want a screaming baby in the truck. So maybe you leave them in the boat or vice versa. You put the, the one that's most confident with the, that person doing that job, 
but you get them locked down and you keep them out of other people's way. It's a dangerous area if they're just running around. So be cautious with that and be aware. You're focused on your skills. You don't want your five-year-old doing something that puts him in danger, puts other people in danger, um, or just makes everybody angry and makes it more stressful that you got to yell at little Johnny again uh, because he's he's in the way. Let them know what you expect from them, and um, and they will. You know, this is part of boating, is what I tell them. If you want to go boating. This is what's required of you. When I say do it, you have to do it. And if you don't, then we don't get to go boating the next time. And uh, my girls love it so much that that works every time. So, um, and remember, time goes by so fast. Um, it, it is incredible to me to see how far my girls have grown from, you know, this is seven years. Emery was probably, she was born in January. And this is probably, you know, six months old. My oldest is going to be 11 this summer. The time goes by fast. Have fun. Get out of the water. Do the things to make it more enjoyable so that they're more comfortable. You're going to have more fun because it, it's so damn much fun to be out with your kids on the water and to have those memories and to have the pictures and to have the firsts the first time they get up skiing, the first time they wakeboard, the first time they tube, the first time they drive the boat, you know, and soon my daughters will be docking the boat and I will be kicking back. Um, so enjoy it. Hopefully this was helpful. Leave a comment, give your tips if you have kids and uh, subscribe, like the video if you found it valuable. Remember, life truly is better on a boat, especially with your kids.